Germany's SPD and the Social Democratic Party of Europe held a democracy congress in Berlin as a show of force against the far right that is gaining traction across Europe. SPD has been polling at a historical low following an economically rocky few years, but the party is now ramping up efforts to win back support after violent far right attacks continue to increase. Die Demokratie wird von so etwas bedroht und deshalb ist achselzuckendes Hinnehmen niemals eine Option. Wir müssen gemeinsam dagegen stehen. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, European Social Democratic Leader Stefan Löwen and the centre-left candidate to head the European Commission, Nicholas Schmidt, spoke out against the attack on Friday night that hospitalised Saxony top candidate for the EU elections, Matthias Ecker. With the European elections just a mere month away, Will the voters choose a future to the left or to the right? Liv Stroud in Berlin for Euronews. Ukraine has been losing ground on the battlefield to Russia over the last several months, in particular in the eastern Donetsk region. Although the United States finally agreed to dispatch $61 billion of military support, the Ukrainian army says it'll be enough just to hold the front line and only potentially recoup some lost ground in the future. The situation has deteriorated in large part due to a serious shortage of ammunition and weapons from Western allies, where Ukrainian forces say they've been rationing bullets with an estimated ratio of around 2,000 rounds a day to the Russians' 7,000 rounds. Effectively, all the ground that's lost is more difficult. So you have to fight back over that ground. But I think also the calculation in Putin's mind has slightly changed to say, well, the the tactics that we're using, they're, they're, they're brutal, quite frankly, but we're making ground. Uh, and Putin's probably in a slightly more advantageous position than as he was in, the last, in six months because you know, it's effectively working and he's able to go on the offensive. So I think it is really quite dire for the Ukrainians now. And the real challenge is that all of this equipment that's going, the new ammunition, will probably only hold the front lines. In some battles, Russia has deployed its so-called human wave tactic, which involves ordering a mass number of poorly trained soldiers, often recruited from prisons, into battlefields to encourage Ukrainians to use up a lot of ammunition, before then unleashing more senior troops with advanced weapons and training. Oleksandr Mataish is a Ukrainian officer who's been on the front line since the start of the full-scale invasion. He fought in Bucha and in the east, and his battalion fought in Avdivka. Uh, we will win this war, but uh, the losses can be critical for Ukraine. We have no enough people. You know, uh, at the start of the war, we have 38 millions. Too many people live. Uh, someone don't want to fight, uh, someone can't fight. If we lose too many people, we just can't uh, uh, defend our country. So we need help. Last week in Kyiv, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg acknowledged to Ukrainian President Zelensky that Ukraine has been outgunned for months and Russia has been able to push forward on the front line. But he said more support is on the way. The question is when. Shona Murray, Euronews, Brussels. Ciao, mi chiamo Francesco, sono insegnante di scuola elementare a Vienna. Il più grande problema dell'istruzione in Austria al momento è la mancanza di personale e se fossi eletto parlamentare europeo vorrei ridare dignità a questo lavoro eh, affinché il, lo stipendio sia adeguato alle mansioni da svolgere e agli anni di studio per far sì che ci siano più insegnanti per migliorare la qualità dell'insegnamento. Helmut Brandstetter, Spitzenkandidat der NEOS für die Europawahl. Ich zähle mich zur glücklichsten Generation, die je in Europa aufgewachsen ist. Und ich hatte alle Möglichkeiten, auch im Ausland zu studieren, in Brüssel bei der Kommission zu arbeiten. Und ich möchte, dass wir dieses Europa für die nächsten Generationen noch besser machen. Ganz konkret, jeder Jugendliche soll die Chance und die Möglichkeit haben, im Ausland zu studieren, zu lernen, auch zu arbeiten, dass wir ein gemeinsames Europa für uns machen und auch in Sicherheit leben.